What's up everyone? Welcome to Talk Verity to Me. I'm Carter and today I'm going to be going through my result for the Kismet Cliff race, the Beast of Beast half marathon that I raced this past weekend. Now this might be my best race performance ever, my best run I've ever had. Um, that's saying like it's been a really good year for me and I I've kept on rolling which is awesome. Um, this, this race is in Conway, New Hampshire which is sort of like you know, maybe the heart of the, the whites, you could say. So the race is a half marathon with 4,300 feet of elevation gain. Um, so it's like a pretty legit mountain race, you know, over that 300 feet per mile. Um, and all of that's stacked up in like one 600 foot climb at like around mile three, then a like 2,600 foot climb, but then another like 600 foot climb at the end. Um, and you know it's a legit climb um once you hit that the final climb up the moats it's like a thousand feet per mile on like scree and rocks it's really intense um and so i've wanted to do this race for a long time because i love mountain races this is one of the rare short mountain races in the northeast that isn't on a ski trail it's on like a legitimate trail which is really cool um so it's been on the bucket list and i finally got to do it this year which i'm excited about so yeah, the, the race starts at um, Echo Lake State Park. It's very beautiful. You see Cathedral Ledge in the background. Um, and starts off by going like around the lake, like halfway around the lake, like pretty flat. Um, and we went out pretty hard for that first little bit. Um, my first full mile was a 726, but looking down at my watch, we were running like 630 pace off the start. Um, and I wasn't even up at the front at all. I was probably like... 10th 12th position off the start um dan kurtz was racing he's um professional trail runner from brooks you know he lives in the upper valley so i've run with him a couple of times at one of the northwoods runs um but he was going for a sub two hour course record here um to get like some prize money i think fifteen hundred dollars so he took it out hot he's also just so much fitter than anyone else in the field and it really showed and then so they'll like Anyways, half marathon and the half marathon. So they have five, four, three, two, one, zero. Get it, get it. Um, but yeah, first mile flat. I guess first, yeah, first mile was flat, and then we had the climb start at mile two and three. Um, and you know, slowed down to 12, 13 minute pace on those, but great adjusted pace was still like 720, 730. At mile two, I ended up getting stung by a yellow jacket on my ankle. It's, it's actually still pretty swollen up and kind of itchy, um, which is a bummer. And that really freaked me out for a little bit because I was, I've never gotten like stung by a bee or a wasp or a yellow jacket like during a run, and I wasn't sure if it's like, you know, dangerous when you're pushing that hard. like. Because I could feel the venom from the yellow jacket like sort of pumping through me because my heart was pumping so fast when I was racing. Um, and it, it really hurt every time I bent my ankle, which was like the entire race. But I was like, I'm not going to let this ruin my race. Things are going well. Um, and, you know, I can deal with a little pain in my ankle. But that was, that was kind of sketchy. Um, definitely got the adrenaline pumping. I started like passing a bunch of people after I got stung. And, um, you know, that actually ended up working out pretty good. Um, there were some aid stations, but for the race, I wore a naked belt with two bottles, um, two like 12 ounce soft flasks. And in each of those soft flasks, I had Morton 320 drink mix. Um, so my plan was to not really stop at any of the aid stations. I didn't need to refill because I thought this race would take me around two and a half hours. Um, so the, the two soft flasks would be, would be plenty. A fuel um, as well as a Morton Calf 100 gel and actually I took that Calf 100 gel at mile three that way the caffeine would actually kick in on the towards the end of the climb and on the descent um, so for fueling went great I had like 740 grams of carbs in the you know roughly two and a half hours that the race would take um, which you know is, is pretty solid for a half marathon so yeah, once we get to the top of the first, like, shorter, like, you know, maybe 700 foot climb, then very steep descent, um, started ripping down that, ran like a 740 mile there, 
Um, at the first aid station after the cap 100 gel, I didn't love the taste in my mouth of the caffeine, I never do. So I did quickly grab like one cup of water and drink it there. Um, but then it was on to the next. Um, and around that like mile four, I find myself entering like fifth position in the race, which I was really happy with. My goal for the race was to get top five, sort of keep that streak going that I have from the Bloodroot 50K and from the Jigger Johnson 50 mile. Um, and then we started the big climb up the moats. And that's like really where my strength was. I know that I'm not a great descender and I wanted to get to the top as high as I could because I know I'd get passed by, you know, probably a couple of people on the descent. Um, so I really started pushing on the climb. I honestly was pushing hard this entire race. Um, talk about the heart rate data later, but, you know, really surprised myself with it. Um, but, you know, I was I was gunning on this ascent, and especially once we got above tree line, when I could see the top, um, that last, like, 500 feet of climbing, I could also, I saw two people in front of me, and I knew that I was in fifth at the time. So I started pushing really, really hard and got to the top, past those two people before getting to the top. And someone there told me that I was in third place, which I was stoked with. Um, I was like, oh, if I could podium here, like I haven't gotten a podium at a trail race yet. Um, but I knew that I'd have to hold on on the downhill, but getting to the top in third was super happy. Um, that was sort of like my dream goal for the race. Then held that position along the ridge line um, that's about a mile long, and then started descending off of South Moat, and it's a brutal descent. Um, honestly, like, it's pretty, it's not absurdly technical, but it's just super steep. Um, we were dropping, like, over a thousand feet a mile for some of it. Um, and shortly after starting the descent, I did get passed by, um, one runner, and that put me into fourth position. I was trying to not let them pass. I was kind of being a jerk. Like whenever they would swerve around, I would surge because I really didn't want to give up that podium spot. But they were just such a good descender and I, I knew that I wouldn't be able to hold that for the entire like last six miles of the race. Um, so they eventually surged around me. I was in fourth position and I was just very determined not to let the next person pass me. I didn't want to get fifth overall again. Um, so yeah, I started running the descent hard um, and then got to a little flat section after descending like 2,000 feet. It was really ripping there. Um, yeah, I was running like seven flat pace on that. Ended up clipping a rock and falling pretty hard. Um, knees a little scraped up and I was racing shirtless because, um, it was going to be pretty hot and, you know, I think that, you know, wearing a shirt on a really hot day can cause you to overheat a little bit. I also, I just, it makes me feel lighter on climbs for some reason. Um, but, you know, I was, body was all dirty after hitting the deck, but got up really quickly, started running again, and as I was running, made sure, like, am I okay, nothing's wrong, but it was all good. Um, and then, you know, we got to the final little 600-foot climb-ish, um, ran up that really hard. I knew it would not last for super long, so I was just pushing. Um, and then once we got to this descent, like, my legs started to get pretty lactic, on the the last bit of that 600 foot climb so they were feeling really heavy on the descent and honestly i wasn't able to run super fast on the descent just because of how like heavy and lactic they were um but pushed as hard as i could and then got down to the lake um with a mile to go um and you know pretty rooty trail pretty technical but i didn't want to get past um I could hear some people cheering behind me, so I thought someone was pretty close to me. Turns out that was a five-miler, because there was also a five-mile race. Um, but, you know, ran in 750 last mile and crossed the finish line in fourth overall in a time of 22 hours, 23 minutes, and 13 seconds, which I was super happy with. Go Carter! Crushing it! Nice job, Carter!
<laughs> Where'd you fall? It was on a dirt section, luckily. Yeah. Not bad, yeah. Oh my god. Dude, that is a sick course. Is yeah. it? Was it fun? Yeah. I thought two and a half hours would be like really good um, and I crushed that so you know that was like around 11 minute pace for hard terrain that's you know over 300 feet a mile um, it's like 745 750 grade adjusted pace um, for something that technical I was really happy with um, that 223 was exactly three minutes behind third place as three minutes off the podium. I honestly don't think that I could have made that up. Um, I think I got almost all out of myself in this race. Maybe on the downhill I could have made up a, like a minute if I didn't fall that one time, but I don't think this is a race I could have gotten on the podium for. Um, Dan Kurtz won the race in 159 flat essentially, which obliterated the course record and he won by 18 minutes, 18 and a half minutes. Um, but that means that, you know, I was only six minutes away from second place on a half marathon. Um, I think that this is a huge performance for me, especially considering that the person who finished second has run some races I've ran. Um, he actually ran in my first 50K where he finished in under five hours. I finished in eight hours and 40 minutes. So I really put in perspective, like, how much I've improved and grown over the past three years of trail running and mountain running. Um, and yeah, I think just like confirmed that my niche is really like these steep climbs um, and that I need to work on the descent. For some, some gear information, you know, I set up the Naked Belt, the, the two Hydropack soft flask, like 12, um, yeah, 12 ounces um, in the Morton gels. I raced in some rabbit shorts and for shoes, I, I wore a new pair of shoes um, that I bought the Hoka's in all twos. I wanted a, a lighter, more minimal shoe for the descent. Um, I was originally going to race in my Hoka Tecton X1s, but wanted something a little closer to the ground so I could descend harder. And that shoe has a phenomenal outsole. Midsole is exactly what you want, like a little bit compressive, but not much there. The upper could have a little bit better lockdown, but not bad. Got the trick done, so definitely super happy with the shoe. Um, and then I had a Koros arm heart rate monitor on, and my heart rate data, this is honestly like the first time I've had like a really hard all out effort with heart rate data. Um, and my average heart rate was 179 beats per minute for the entire two hours and 20 minutes which I thought my threshold was around like 178, 179, but if I'm able to hold it for two and a half hours, like that is not my threshold heart rate. My threshold heart rate's probably more like 183, um, which is really eye-opening for me. It was pretty hot towards the top of that, um, top of the ascent. Um, and so, you know, probably made my heart rate a little bit higher, but you know, I've been afraid that I've been working out too hard because my heart rate's been getting up to like 182 during workouts, but that's probably actually at my threshold, um, which I'm pretty happy with. But yeah, no, that was a beast of a race. Um, and I, I think it's a great way for my season to keep going like this. Um, this was sort of my last mountain thing for the entire year. I'm doing one like backpacking trip, very easy going this next week, and then transitioning to all road running. I've got a lot of road races this year. Um, this fall, but yeah, um, I'm super stoked on how my rate, my season has gone. Like I started with a marathon win in like March, April time frame, um, fifth place at a 50k, um, blood route 50k. Then I got an FKT in Ireland. Then I got fifth place at Jager Johnson. Then I got an FKT up Mount Hale, um, and now a, a fourth place at the Kismet Cliff Race. Like. That's pretty solid, so I'm hoping I can add on like a, you know, 120-ish half marathon and a 250-ish marathon, but we'll see. I, if it ended like this this season, I'd also be super happy. Um, but yeah, it was an amazing race, and I have no doubt that I can, you know, at that race take off another five minutes and, you know, get into that second place or winning the race a lot. I mean, my time that I ran this year... Granted, we had like pretty great conditions, if not a little warm, um, but that time, 
places second or wins the race most years in the past five years. Um, so I was, you know, super happy with that. I think I'm knocking on the door of, like, being regionally competitive, which is what my dream is, is to be able to, like, show up to these races in the Northeast and be a contender for that win. Um, you know, I guess I've, you know, this year I've established myself as someone that can, you know, be in that top five, and I think I can make that further leap, which would be really exciting. Um, you know, this was a little unstructured, just my, my thoughts on the race and a little bit of footage, but I hope you enjoyed. Um, hope you enjoy following along for all the, the road running fans. We'll have some of that coming soon. Um, some nice long road running, long runs on the road with some faster paces, but I'll still be getting those hilly runs in, don't worry. Um, but yeah, if you did enjoy, I'd love it if you could like this video, subscribe to the channel, and as always, keep on running. Thank you.